coaches in the game, haha, <laughs> we really ain't playing. We regroup up in the slack chat where the coaches debrief. We be piecing these puzzles, occupy the chunk of the pie. Ain't no lie when we hit the block, helmets cast it as God. You be seeing helmet after helmet, helmet after helmet. First place, second place, fifth place, eighth place, twelfth place, fifteen, sixteen, twenty. So many helmets, you got blurred vision, we got too many. Dick your check, oh man, shit. <laughs> they got us fucked up. Army, regroup. We pledge always to have that edge. We don't fire warning shots. Competition just dropped. We locked and loaded before lock. Whatever the time, yeah. Do you even correlate? Being the best requires a willingness to outwork your competition. There's always someone smarter, faster, sharper. More naturally gifted. Welcome back to another edition of the Millie Maker Review Weekend Review. It was a huge week for DFS Army, and I'm excited to get into it. So without further ado, let's do it. Um... We're going to start with the Millie Maker review, but this was a big week for DFS Army. We had a $50,000 takedown. We had uh, a top 15 finish in the Millie Maker. So um, after we do what won the Millie Maker, we're going to jump right into uh, some of the strategy of some DFS Army VIPs. So my Millie Maker review over at DFSArmy.com um, wrote about it this week. What was crazy, It was this was a wild week, and really what set the stage was the Dolphins scoring 70 points on the Broncos. Uh, horrible as a Broncos fan, but, you know, whatever. I, I, DFS makes life easier during this time of year when your team sucks. So the winning Millie Maker Bill, 294 points, almost 300 points, and you know it just had to have some Dolphins in it. That's not even the most impressive part of this. The guy who won the Millie Maker is, showed more dominance than I've ever seen in a contest of that size. Four out of the top five were this guy right here. I don't even know how to spell his name. He won the Millie Maker. He put four lineups in the top five, um, including this one that won the Millie Maker, obviously. So Jared Goff and Sam Laporta. It was a QB plus one. Pretty crazy that it didn't even have Tua. It didn't have Herbert. It was a Jared Goff sack who scored under 20 points. So Goff to Laporta. But, oh, there were plenty of stacks. So this lineup had three different stacks from three different games of two players. So Raheem Mostert, Tyreek Hill. These two obviously smashed against the Broncos and combined for almost 80 points. And then you had that Jared Goff, Sam Laporta stack. Eh, not a whole lot there, right? But it really was about the value uh, of these players just being cheap and and just allowing the rest of the lineup to come together as it did. So uh, Goff and Laporta, 41 points. And then Kenneth Walker, Adam Thielen, this stack smashed as well uh, for 65 points. So you had a total of 185 points and 83% ownership out of these six players. So with the Jared Goff and Laporta side being contrarian and the rest really being chalk. So when we get right into the ownership, this was a this was a chalky lineup. So you had uh, only two players under 10% ownership and kind of leading the way you had three players over 20%. So Kenneth Walker, uh, Tyreek Hill, and Tank Dell all at over 20%. Total was 132% highest we've seen really since week 10 of 2022. And, and really only three times in 2022 did we see a winning Millie Maker build with over 130% total ownership. Uh, it does happen a few times, maybe four or five times a year. Most times it's not going to happen. So if you are wanting to build chalky lineups, just know that more times than not, it's going to fail. So top leverage plays. Jared Goff, kind of what I was saying. No, he was 11th in scoring. I, I found that to be truly remarkable that he made it into the winning build. Um, he was 11th in scoring. And it just kind of goes to show how uh, bonkers the slate actually was. 
But uh, nonetheless, I think the salary savings and, you know, kind of what you did with the rest of the lineup and just only stacking with a very cheap Laporta is why he was in the, the winning build and, and a pretty good leverage play. Now, Laporta was a great leverage play at 9% because uh, he was the top scoring tight end on the slate with eight receptions on 11 targets, 84 yards and a touchdown. And then Adam Thielen, he had nine targets in week two. And really, I think what happened here was – the field just kind of ignored him because there were so many good value plays on the slate that, you know, it was nine targets and we're like, yeah, it's whatever. It's Adam Thielen. He was 33 years old. Is that going to repeat? Well, uh, he got 14 targets in this game. So there were some really good value plays like Tank Dell who, who went off as well. Um, and I think that's kind of why maybe Adam Thielen was a little under owned, even though he was only 3,900 and, and then, you know, uh, decent game environment not a great one but you know at his price going against seattle um uh, without adams you know a seattle team has certainly been in some shootouts over the past year and then raheem mostert for me you know not really that raheem mostert was a was a great leverage play um you know at 15 percent. but when you look at some of the guys who were a lot more expensive um and like pollard who was 8k and you know and etn was seven thousand basically and you know, quite a bit, just a little bit more owned than Moser. And then obviously we had uh, Josh Kelly who failed again, even in a, D, even in a good matchup. So um, if you just spent another $600 on Moser, he was only 15% versus 25% Kelly who absolutely did nothing. And it speaks for itself. The kind of day Moser had seven X when we get into pricing and value, I mean, what can you say here besides the fact that this lineup third week in a row, okay, did not spend all $50,000 of salary. Now, this happened, I believe, five times in all of 2022, and normally it was like 49.9. This is now the third week in a row where we have not seen the winning lineup spend all 50000 which I think is pretty crazy. And then obviously... When you get a lineup that does that, or even if it was 50000 it's only $300 difference, when you have 294 points, you're going to have some incredible value plays. Bills, DST, the top one, 11X their salary. Adam Thielen, 8X salary. Tank Dell, set almost 8X. Keenan Allen, 6X. Raheem Mostert, 7X. You have one, two, three, four, five players. Um actually six that produce over six X and normally you just need one of those to win the Millie maker, but that just goes to show just how bonkers this lineup was. And then we talk about ceiling with the 294 points. That's a 32 point average per roster spot. There's nine roster spots. So 32 points. Now one, you know, caveat to this, or just one thing to keep in mind is most weeks you will not see builds anywhere near this high. This was definitely an extreme outlier. Um, you know, and I, it was funny because I scored like 234 uh, points in the mini max and uh, it would have been good enough to win the Millie maker the first two weeks this week in the Millie maker, this wouldn't even been good enough for a top 500 finish. Like that's how crazy of a high of a score it took to win this week to win any large real gpps as we're about to get into and then one thing i will say and you know shout out obviously uh dfs army's founder kevin allen the geek he kind of talked about this on uh, a recent podcast where he was saying believe it or not i think the qb plus two is kind of a better build for smaller uh, field tournaments, maybe even large field, but just not like as large as the Millie maker that has 200 plus plus 200,000 plus entries. And the reason being is there are so many different player combinations, right? That it almost, you get, you get closer to like the optimal build for, um, you know, to win the Millie maker. So QB plus one wins out a lot of times, even on this slate where you had the Miami dolphins, score 70 points it's just crazy how how that ends up working out that way that a qb plus one is what brought is what ended up taking it down um but that said we're gonna get into it the third place lineup had a qb um plus two stack if you consider the running back you know not just qb plus two pass catchers 
you have to be willing to sack the running back for those onslaught sacks was in one of the top five lineups same guy this was his third place lineup so we're going to get into that and it kind of makes you wonder if they had kept Tua in the game because they didn't pull him because they were just boat racing the broncos what would have happened like maybe if denver had scored 30 points in this game and, and it would have been an ultimate shootout and really you know they didn't pull him so early Tua definitely would have got there as we are uh getting in as we're about to get into so want to jump over to um in fact we're gonna start it here dfs army if you are a dfs army vip you know how we do how we win nolan won uh the flea fifty thousand dollars the first and he actually shared some of his strategies so we're gonna look at his lineup I want to. I wanted to have him on the show, but he's super busy. wasn't able to make it. He's got a lot going on. Uh, but he shared with me a little bit of his mindset for the slate. So we're going to get into that, um, and then we're going to get into his exposures. So um, let's take a look. All right, I'm gonna stop the screen share for this because uh, he kind of sent gave me some of his notes. So I just want to go over these real quick and basically this was his process for this slate so what he said was to start off the plays in his winning lineup were three star plays on geeks sheet now for those of you who are not dfs army subscriber geek does a cheat sheet we all do um but geek is obviously the founder and one of the best and his sheets are something that we've learned through backtesting they're very accurate he's incredibly good at what he does so he basically went off of geeks cheat sheets and kind of went to the optimizer and put adores and loves on the guys that geek was really high on he took it a step further he said it's very important that you're not only looking over the the spreadsheets but listening to the podcast you must listen to tournament tactics by the way that is a free podcast on the site it's not a vip only um so make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that notification button so you never miss an episode however geek always takes it except further when he does his own because he does tournament tactics on friday with some of the sharp minds in dfs army and then he does players club which is a vip only podcast on saturday that's when we get all the injury news and he really just dials it in he's like you have to listen to this um to get the tone of his voice and the crew's voice when talking about a player, not all three star plays are the same and the subconscious of our coaches know it. So with that being said, he said, you must still trust yourself. Having at least one min player in all lineups, that's something that um, rule seemed like overkill. So it's something that he disregarded. And he also is a proponent of correlation stacking where he's actually setting um, a min exposure. I need 10 lineups of Kirk Cousins. I need 10 lineups of Tua. I need 10 lineups of Josh Allen. So this is kind of something in Nolan's process that he does to, to be good in MME, just really trying to get the slate, the way you see it playing out, you need to make sure that you have exposures to that guy. So that's something that uh, he does specifically. And he uses some randomization, no players to risk defense, um, you know, he won't have more than one pass catcher if it's not, um, with it stacked with the quarterback, so on and so forth and bringing it back. Like he says with geek, I adore, he goes in the optimizer and I'm going to show you here in a second, how you, how you can do this, but, uh, he adores all of geeks four to five star plays. So these are the plays that geek obviously feels the strongest about. So he does that. He does not set minimum exposures. That's one of the differences. We And we kind of go back on this a lot, um, you know, and this just kind of goes to different overall strategy. So for those who maybe want to be way over on a player, when they're right, they're really right. And they're going to have a great week. When they're wrong, it's going to be a bad week. There's that school of thought. And then there's also the school of thought. I'm, I'm going to have a max exposure. And, you know, maybe some guys will get to 35%. But a lot of guys, you know, maybe they'll be 10 to 15%. So there's also that school of thought where you're never too high on anyone. And this way you kind of cycle through enough players so you can get the guys you like. So that is kind of his flavor mixed in with it. And um, I just want to 
as we wrap this up, you know, just kind of some of his thoughts. Um, I want to show you what I mean by this. Now, with correlation stacking, his his mindset is it tightens your pool because um, he likes being able to really hone in on a bunch of players that he really likes. And with correlated stacking, he feels like he gets too many players. So it's just some food for thought. He also says he plays MME because he has a good job that he knows he can't afford to play MME. So bankroll management is key. Don't MME a slate if you can't afford to do so. And he kind of closed it by saying that uh, the most crucial thing with that is knowing that you're going to live in your three max tournaments. Um, those are where you're going to make most of your money. And MME is going to be part of your portfolio, but just don't get too crazy with it. So that said, let's go ahead and look back to um, just kind of what we're talking about with the domination station. Okay. So a couple of things we're talking about with the domination station is be, just having being able to control what you want to do. So if you want to do Josh Allen in a minimum of 20 lineups, you can actually zero out some of these players that you don't want to sack with with uh, Josh Allen. If you if you if you just feel like this is a bad matchup for Stefan Diggs, you want to limit his exposure, you can. You want to, you know, get uh Exposure, you want to pump up points for Gabe Davis, pump up points for Dawson Knox, Dalton Kincaid, whoever it may be. This is something you can do. Now, this he does say, and I have experienced this because I used to use this. Um, you have tons of control over it. You can do it exactly what you want it to do, but it is very time consuming. So just keep that in mind. Um, another thing is you go down here, kind of what he was talking about, adores and loves, you can say, I adore. Justin Jefferson, maybe you are really high on, I don't know, some random dude, Drake London this week. So you're really high on Drake London. You can slap, slap an door on him, and this will obviously pump up their projection, and you will get more of them in the optimizer. So this is a tool you have as a DFS Army subscriber, DFS Army VIP. If you are not a DFS Army VIP, use code Fantasy Fling. Join us. No time like the present for 10% off a VIP subscription. So let's get into Nolan's winning lineup. And as you can see here, I already showed you the screenshot of his DFS Army avatar, but he uh, maxed this contest, won um, first place over 50,000. And let's take a look at the lineup that brought it home. So we have Justin Herbert, Mike Williams, and Keenan Allen. So you did have a plus two here in this lineup. And 284 points. So just 10 points behind first place that won the Millie Maker. So very close. He obviously would have finished top five in the Millie too. Um, Kenneth Walker, Raheem Mostert. So, you know, pretty similar lineup to what you saw take down the Millie. One of the differences, obviously, being uh, Michael Pittman. And some Stroud lineups. And, you know, it wasn't always QB plus two, obviously. You see a CJ Stroud lineup here um, with just a Tank Dell stack. And let's take a look at some of his exposure. So this is what was, the, I think, the craziest part for me seeing some of this and really just bringing his words to the screen. So he kind of talked about the fact that he will he won't, do the 35% limit if he really likes a player. He's got 76% Mike Williams here. And wh what he really was saying was, I, I'm willing to go, whatever the field is, I'm willing to go three, four, five X that, because I feel like that's how you really take down a large field GPP. He's like, as an MME player, I know it's a losing battle most of the time. I'm not trying to, you know, really make a profit. He's like, I I'm trying to win the whole damn thing. So that's what he did here. Obviously, you got Mike Williams, 76%, who smashed, um, doubled the field on Keenan Allen. Tank Dell was quite a bit over the field there. 
um, a little over the field on Justin Jefferson, but really flag planted with uh, Mike Williams. And then Raheem Mostert was over the field there. You know, and running backs, he wasn't too crazy, as you can see, about, about the running backs. Um, you know, it wasn't a Mike Williams all-in play on any of the running backs. And, and that just goes to show with running backs, uh, you know, especially with a lot of these dudes who are kind of backup quality, right? Alexander Madison, uh, Jameer Gibbs is, is a backup. Um, you know, Raheem Mostert really talented, but really Jeff Wilson could be the starter. So, you know, Josh Kelly's a backup. So, you know, not going crazy, obviously on, um, th any of the running backs, but, uh, yeah, getting some exposure to Trevor Lawrence, Deshaun Watson, Justin Herbert, you know, being almost triple the field on Justin Herbert. Um, and yeah, he's going to say, I'm only going to play about eight to 10 quarterbacks most weeks. Um, and you know, like he said, at least 10 lineups on a lot of these guys that, that he likes. And then tight end, obviously, kind of the same principle here, right? Now, Durham Smythe was a great play. The problem was Mostert, Hill, and A-Chain got all the tutties. Um, they just, I watched the game as a Broncos fan. They just ran down the Broncos' throats, and, you know, and it is what it is. And that's why Mostert and A-Chain got most of the touchdowns. And, and honestly, Tyreek Hill got one touchdown. And to start the game in zone coverage when Patrick Sertan wasn't on him. Um, but after that, you know, he got, he got targets and he got yards, but he was, he was quiet. He didn't have a ton of explosive plays. So uh, Darren Smythe was a great play. It just didn't work out in this situation, but you know, it's that kind of conviction to, to be on the guys obviously um, that you really like. And then last bills D 85%. So to finish it up there, what Nolan was talking about, it was such a good spot for the Bills. He, they were underpriced. They were going against uh, a young quarterback and a team that really hasn't proven anything, but it was coming off a pretty big win. And they smashed uh, 32 points, 11 extra salary, and he had 85%. So when you when 85% of your lineups have a player um, like the Bills D that's you know going to score 32 points and you have Mike Williams, going to be hard not to be in a situation to bank just like Nolan did here. So great stuff from him. A um, couple other guys. Now we're going to jump over to the Millie maker. So just want to look at a few people this week, obviously uh, the winning guy, because he had such an incredible run <laughs> with four lineups in the top five and winning the Millie maker. Um, and then I want to look at a guy that I've looked at before doing these reviews, the whistles. And the whistles, if you play DFS, if you're a serious DFS player, you know he is one of the top DFS pros in the world. And the whistles kind of deploys that strategy. And oh, and by the way, I, I know every time this happens, if we have to reload because it's just going to freeze. Um, he he uses that strategy that we were just talking about with Nolan. There we go. So the whistle's only won $400, but in the Millie Maker, a win's a win, right? This is the Millie Maker now. And this is oftentimes that he does this. And when he does this, he almost always hits. Like he knows the quarterback is going to have a good game. I have not seen him go all in on a quarterback yet, lock him in 150 lineups, and then not have a good game. So uh, shout out to him. Now, He, we might be talking – we might be breaking down a whistles winning millimaker build if he had done better on guessing the running backs that we're going to go off because he had AJ Dillon terrible. I mean, as far as uh, ROI on, on AJ Dillon, terrible. Uh, Miles Sanders did okay. Not enough though. Um, Isaiah Pacheco, same thing. Did okay. Not enough. Zach, Zach boss had a pretty good day. Ramondre Stevens. So, I mean, you know, you could see, 
not a tournament winning day from any of these guys. And obviously Kenneth Walker, the guy he needed, you know, he was under the field there and he was under the field on Raheem Mostert. So that's just how it goes. Obviously didn't guess right. Guess right on the quarterback and guess right on the quarterback to stacks. Mike Williams, Keenan Allen. This is how you have a profitable day in the Millie maker and, you know, don't come really that close to winning it. Right. In fact, let's look at his top lineup here. He had, he had quarterback from what I was looking at earlier, QB plus one and some QB plus two and some, uh, and some double. Yeah. So top 500, just out of the top 500 and some, uh, double tight end builds. And he did not force spring back. So this was his best build. Obviously he had Herbert Gibbs, Sanders, Jefferson, Keenan Allen. And this was one of those QB plus one builds that we we're talking about. Uh, Tank Dell, Durham Smythe and Adam Thielen. So great build just didn't get there. But yeah, this one, Justin Herbert, this is a Justin Herbert and Keenan Allen. So kind of same thing. Kenneth Walker smash Pierce didn't get there. Um, Williams, Cortland Sutton and Duke Cortland Sutton should have had a much better day. He had two fumbles dropped a touchdown. He had one call back because of a penalty. So, uh, Cortland Sutton totally could have broke the slate and changed the entire, the entire slate. Dolphins still would have won by a significant amount, but Cortland Sutton would have been in the nuts too. Possibly 2%. It's hard to say. Um, but yeah, tank Dell 20% Evan Ingram, Keaton Allen, so a little bit of QB plus one and QB plus two. And then, yeah, there you have it. Double tight end. And, you know, I think he had a lot of, of uh, Durham Smythe. And obviously he didn't get there kind of as we saw the past slate. Yeah, 26%. So good amount there. It was a great play. Just didn't work out. That's how it goes in DFS. Zach Gers, Gerald Everett. And then obviously, uh, obviously you're going to have a good amount of Gerald Everett, when you lock in 150 lineups of um, Justin Herbert. So Mike Williams, Keenan Allen, Josh Palmer, same with Josh Palmer. That's, that's kind of a, a play where you have heavy exposure to Herbert. Yeah. You're going to, you're going to get different because you knew Mike Williams and Keenan Allen were going to be chalk. So yeah, a little bit of Palmer and I believe Palmer had a touchdown. So um, that'll work. Justin Jefferson and that same game. If you're using a good optimizer, you, you don't always have to force a, a bring back. Obviously, um, it wasn't forced, but um, you're gonna get it. You're gonna get if you got a good optimizer like we do at DFS Army, the Domination Station. You're gonna get a good amount of Jefferson in there. Under on Tyreek, under on Tank Dell. All right, next two guys we're gonna look at. I don't want to spend a ton of time on this build, um, but I will because this is another DFS Army subscriber. And at one point he was like top seven in the Millie Maker. And I thought he might win it, but you know, he was the first guy was, you know, nine points away from second place. So you know, it wasn't happening. But Cuckoo is a guy that I have looked at before in the past. He's a DFS Army VIP, and he has he's got close, and he's one of those guys where he he probably gonna he's probably gonna win this thing before it's all said and done, because um, he's gotten close before. Positive ROI, 150 max player. Um, look at his top build, and it really was this top build that ended up being a positive ROI day. So we won't get too crazy into his exposures. But just want to shout him out because it's so hard to get this close. It's so hard to get this close. Um, Justin Herbert, Keenan Allen, Mike Williams. Now, he did do a lot of QB plus two. And it just goes to show this is why he got close, but also why, you know, most of his lineups weren't near the top one, right? Because it's it's just hard to get QB plus two, you're really trying to get the nuts. Like you're not playing for a positive ROI uh, day most of the time. I mean, most of these games are just a lot low, more lower scoring than they used to be. So Justin Herbert, Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, 
Kenneth Walker and Raheem Moser. So, you know, right here, this lineup is absolutely smashing. In fact, if he had played Laporta, you know, top five, just awesome. Uh, he tanked Dell. You know, really, the difference was the tight end. Those damn tight ends, you just can't figure them out, right? So uh, Taysom Hill, DK Metcalf. DK Metcalf was a great leverage play, and really so was Taysom Hill. So, you know, shout out to, to Cuckoo for this lineup because he got different in these two spots and made this lineup contrary. And uh, in addition to, you know, eating all this chalk. So, and kind of surprising Justin Herbert ended up as uh, contrarian as he was because, geez, 7%. That's a really good play. And then, yeah, this was a top 2,000 lineup. Very similar. Gus Bus didn't get there. And uh, neither did Andrews or Jamal Agnew. But uh, good for him. How we do. And honestly, every time I study the, the Melee Maker, I look at the leaderboard, there's almost always a DFS Army VIP in the top 200. That's just how it goes. So last guy i want to look at obviously the guy that won it the guy that took it down we're gonna get into his build so we're just gonna go back to the leaderboard here um obviously we got into his build but i just was stunned that he had a dupe so you know really he had uh three lineups here so these are the same lineup and then um you know the third place lineup since the two tied for first and then and then uh, the fifth place lineup, um, just absolutely incredible um, what he was able to do. So let's take a look at the differences here. So this lineup, Tua plus Raheem Moser plus Tyreek Hill. And this is kind of what I talked about a little bit in the group chat. So this is Tua with Tua. So Tua and Raheem Moser and Tyreek Hill. You had Kenneth Walker, you had Keenan Allen, you had Tank Dell. Um, really, the difference is Dalton Schultz. So, chose a bad tight end. Obviously, you had Thielen. So, this is basically this is the winning build here, with the exception of Goff versus Laporta. Right? That's the two v two. But nonetheless, like if he had Tua and any other tight end that didn't bomb. Let's see what Laporta's price was again. So Laporta was, well, here's the difference here, right? So his lineup was was 49.7. Laporta was 4,000. Schultz was 3,700. So that was the difference. Um, so, yeah, I mean, this lineup was would have been certainly more optimal. Um, but, yeah, just crazy to think that um, he won with a Goff and Laporta lineup, but really, I mean, to a lineup with uh, Raheem Mostert or Tyree Kill should have been the lineup to take it down. Um, but yeah, nonetheless, great lineups. And then uh, let's look at his other lineup that he had. So he had Andy Dalton. We're going to get into his exposures, and it's it's not what you would think. It's it, He wasn't crazy heavy on uh, the guys that won. So, um, and you know, we've covered that before. It's kind of like, I always go back to Megan joy had 1% Joe Burrow and won the million maker with 1% Joe Burrow, but here Andy Dalton, Adam Thielen. Um, so that was a, obviously a, a pretty good stack there. Just QB plus one. And you had Raheem Mostert, you had Zach Moss, you had Tyreek Hill, Keenan Allen, Michael Pittman, Sam Laporta. Adam Thielen and Buffalo D. So just incredible to see four lineups in the top five, obviously one being duped. Um, but let's go ahead and look at exposures here.
So what kind of as I was alluding to, Cousins was his highest owned guy. Um, didn't sniff really the win in the Millie Maker at all. If you if you locked in Cousins, for example. So Cousins was the highest owned guy. Uh Andy Dalton, an 18 percent. And the top performing lineups, one Dalton, one Goff. Well, really two to Goss if you can't the dupe, and then uh Atua lineup at eleven percent. So, you know, out of 150, pretty incredible. And yeah, just very low on everyone else. But here's really what sets this lineup apart. So you have a lot of positive leverage leverage on Raheem Mostert. Um some positive leverage on Kenneth Walker, but yeah, he's still even 45%. Um, Josh Kelly and 43% drone forward. And then Tony Pollard, only 18 points off of 8K, you know, not enough to get you there. And, uh, and, you know, another thing too, is I said 150, he didn't have 150, he actually had 45. So, you know, these exposures, they're obviously going to be a little bit higher than you know they would be for like 100 if you're playing 150 lineups right so um 45 percent of 45 lineups is going to be it's going to look quite a bit different than it would for 45 percent of 150 so obviously 45 percent of 150 is going to create a lot more lineups so just something to keep in mind obviously um but the principles are the same what, however many lines you have, it all it all depends on like your exposures to these specific players. You're gonna kind of hone in on a certain pool of players um, for the most part, which is really having a lot of Kenneth Walker and Raheem Mostert that really was able to to get those four lineups to the top of the leaderboards. And then same thing here, Adam Thielen, Keenan Allen, way over the field on these guys um, with as far as exposures, Tyree Kill. Tank Dell and Mike Williams. So um, with the exception of Mike Williams, each of these guys was uh, that was in the winning build. Thielen, Tank Dell, Tyreek Hill was all over 40%. And uh, Keenan Allen was pretty heavily rostered too, but um, just under 40%. And then kind of the same thing. Durham Smythe was a great play. The guy that had four lineups in the top five of the million maker was on Durham Smythe. Just didn't work out. So don't beat yourself up too much if you're not on the right plays. Um, you know, it's like a parlay. You're guessing the plays. It's an educated guess. You can get, you can nail four out of five of legs of a parlay. But if you don't get that one, you don't win the top spot. Um, luckily in DFS, so if you get four out of five plays right, you can normally still win a large field GPP. Ad. And then kind of how we saw with Nolan, absolutely smashed uh, with the exposure here for the top defense of the day. And that's what it took to win 1.2 million. So I think that's going to do it for this week. I hope you all like this content. If you do, hit that notification button so you never miss an episode. Make sure you're subscribed if you're not subscribed, of course. Comment. Let me know who you played. Um, let me know who you like this next week because we got we got another slate. We're looking forward. We're going to look back before we look forward, but we're looking forward. And then if you like this kind of content, it really helps if you hit that like button. So really appreciate it. And if you want to join us, I mean, the numbers speak for themselves. Actually, was trying to get LOO advantage on as well as Nolan. And these guys are both busy, busy people. People are busy. It happens. But he's had $200,000 takedowns. Um, to start the year in showdowns. This is an esports guy and just using the tools, knowing what he knows about DFS, crushing it. So now's the time. Use code Fantasy Fling for 10% off a of VF prescription and join us. Coaches Notes, the Players Club, Tournament Tactics, Shark Labs, all of it. You get access to it. And of course, the Domination Station. So that's going to do it for this week. We will see you all next Monday. Take care. See you at the top of the leaderboards.